Hello, welcome to Talk Time. And this week, we are taking a look at a very interesting topic. Transporters and drivers are in the news again with the announcement of a 15% increase in transport fares. Some have said that the drivers are being unreasonable and their unions are being unreasonable. Others have said that they are also human beings. They need to eat. They need to look after their children and so on. What is the perspective of some of the transport unions? And that, that's what we're going to be looking at. And uh, we are very privileged to be having with us in the studio somebody who knows it all. Welcome to Talk Time. It's a beautiful day. I'm gonna make most of it. It's a beautiful day. A day to share with you. You make my world go round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really got me saying, Nasco. Experience the wide range of top quality and affordable electronics, phones, tablets, home and office appliances from NASCO. NASCO, bring home happiness. Hello, welcome back to Talk Time. And as I indicated from the very beginning, we are talking transport. We are talking transport fares. And we'll probably be talking about the impact of the cost of spare parts, the impact of petrol, and so on. And we are perhaps lucky, perhaps privileged to have with us in the studio Mr. Paul Kanate, who is the treasurer of the Eastern Region Cooperative Transport Union. So you're welcome to the studio. Thank you. Why have you decided to increase lorry fares? <laughs> Thank you. Let me take this opportunity to thank all your numerous listeners and wish them happy Easter, which are the corner. And as well, sound this as a warning to drivers, especially commercial drivers, that once more our name will be ringing again, that they should be very observant in terms of road traffic regulations so that at least this Easter coming, we may have the barest minimum of us, and if not at all. Thank you once more. Uh, what are we talking about? Hmm. This transport fares issues. Uh, some of us, those who are deeply involved with it, it worries us a lot. In the sense that you could bear with me when there's this change of government for now, there will be increase in fuel prices. Sometimes it comes in tidbits, so you may not know it. Gone are those days when Four increment comes per gallon. These days in liter. So if it is two pesos per liter, a gallon is having about 4.5 liters. So we will be running towards nine pesos increment. And what worries me most about these things is anytime there is four increment, commercial drivers in particular are asked not to increase the affairs. And to some of us, it doesn't sound well. In the sense that there's nobody in Ghana here trading who will go to market, buy commodity at a new price and come to sell at the old price. But this thing is always being held on with the transport operators, commercial, uh, I mean. Mm -hmm. It worries a lot. Meanwhile, when there is increment in fuel, everything goes up. All most people know is just about the fuel. Engine oil, tires, spare parts, all are involved. So you realize that at the tail end of it, your profit margin comes down. So when it comes to this state and the public is crying, he said they're not being fair to those of us running the transport. Those of us involved for years now, we could assess and come out, realize that there is no particular person now who might be having a vehicle, could run it over some period of time, and out of the proceeds that he makes out of that vehicle, he could add up another one. When you get anybody doing that, maybe he has other business. 
So that business has earned him the second vehicle and not the very vehicle that he's using. So that industry is dying day in, day out. So when it comes to this, we expect the public to see eye to eye with us. Have the patience, have the confidence, have the trust that we are also human beings. They should, they should see eye to eye with us. And we share the problem left and right. When it comes to increment, you go to the pump just to be told they have increased fuel. It will not be announced. As it was announced that from Thursday, there should be increment of lorry fares by 15%. We are all aware that it's coming on Thursday. But you work at the end of the day, you go to buy your fuel just at the pump. They will tell you that the fuel has been increased. Mm -hmm. Certain times, you go, they will tell you they have not adjusted the pump yet. So immediately there's increment. Attendants will bring calculator. How much do you want to buy? They will just slap on it. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Then they give what? They will give you. They will reduce it. Meanwhile, when fuel are reduced, when you go, they will tell you they have not come to. So you buy at the old price. Meanwhile, it has been reduced. All these things goes against with the transport. And nobody see eye to eye with us. Indeed, we suffer. Those of us in the transport business, we suffer a lot. Because I will not deceive you. Hmm. Uh, I have been off the road for some time now. And uh, I think somewhere in January, I got back to the road. Normally, one thing with me is I like keeping my toll records one time when i saw the tickets after two weeks I said, what the amount of money that have come out of me just for toll one cd per in and out one cd within two weeks meanwhile what i paid at the various stations are out when you go and you load at the station you pay parking ticket after that one is to the government you go to the other end the same thing the expenses we make, nobody knows about it. But all the times, we drivers are seen, commercial drivers, we are seen as not being fair to the public. So some of these things, we expect the public to see eye to eye with us, so that maybe we can also bridge gaps. You know that it is not only petroleum prices which affect the fares. Yeah. Now, since this government came into power, we are told that taxes on spare parts have been reduced, I and mean, import duties have been abolished. Mm -hmm. Abuso can spare parts dealers say that they are voluntarily reducing their prices. <laughs> Why are you not taking that into consideration? Ah, uh, Kwesi, mm -hmm. uh, have you been there yourself, Abuso Kain? No, sir. Find time and get there. What happened when you go? They tell you those parts were imported before the reduction. So until they sell them and bring in new ones, before they can adjust their prices. So those things, they are, just, they are just making the market for themselves. When that news came, most of us rushed in because we had certain parts that were so expensive we could not buy. So we thought we would meet them at reduced prices. We rushed in, just to be told the story. So how, how, how do you factor that in until you come to the grounds? Mm. But that's about the import duty. Yeah. But they said that they themselves, even without the import duties, they were reducing prices. Mm. They only said it. It's just a fallacy. They only said it. Just You know, uh, one thing about Ghanaians, mm. sometimes we make certain noise. When you want the reality of it, you see it is not so. Mm. I get in it. Mm -hmm. And it's about time we need to be serious with whatever we say, whatever we do. Because day in day out, we're growing. Development is setting in. We need to exhibit that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You have not reduced prices, and you are telling public that you have reduced prices. You go, it is not so. Why should mm -hmm. it be so? So here it is that when it, it happens that uh, I might have sent you to go and buy me some part. You went last two months. You bought it at a, 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 an amount. This time it is clear that there is reduction. I send you again. You go and come. It is the same or almost a little bit. I wouldn't believe you. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Yeah. Because it has been said, we are, we are all aware. I wouldn't believe it. I would think you're cheating on me. But it's not so. That's the reality on the ground. Mm. Now, when you increase fares, how does it affect your business? Ah, uh, see, This is just a simple mathematics. Do you make more money? Do you get more passengers? Do people feel reluctant to join your vehicle? How does it affect your business? Uh, when increment comes, normally, 
from the onset uh, the number of maybe haulage that we make may tone down a bit because the unexpected has happened right but uh, should you be able to make it eventually you should be able to make some little bit improvement in your income because this time uh, how much fuel you buy as per how much money you get at the end of the day the difference should be a little bit higher than what happens but uh, to be honest with you transport sector now that, that, that business is dying gradually like i said earlier on it's dying gradually i remember some 20 plus years ago when transport was very lucrative in the sense that there were no more vehicles in the system right now normally at the end of the month monday tuesday wednesday it's a matter of getting to the station loading from one end to the other without getting passengers back i get up very early in the morning by 6 a.m i start my business by 2 p.m i might have made three trips just putting them there and i get back i'll be able to get my fuel money i get my sales money i get my pocket money i get in it but this time when you do it you wouldn't get anything yes because you, you, you are of age you agree with me when increment started during a champion time when they started increasing uh, workers salary most of them were happy with it but it came to a time those who have an amount or some percentage they use in buying food stores like provision to the house they realize that the quantity they are able to buy has reduced mm -hmm. so they realize that the increment that they gave them was not worth and that is what is happening in the transport business so he's dying day in day out but because we don't have leaders who will speak out our leaders honestly speaking to be honest with you when you, i i i am up and down so i hear what happens up and what happens down drivers have no confidence in their leaders mm. because they don't, they don't they don't come out to speak for them uh, i have had the opportunity of being at uh, road safety campaigns my intention was i had certain questions to chip in so that we, can, we could all say and then learn out of it because see at the end of delivery of the messages not even a single question will be allowed to be asked off they go and then after they are gone then the driver started talking ah why wouldn't they allow them also to actually say they, have, they come and then they put all the problem on the as if they are inhuman as if they're interested in causing accidents and whatnot and this and that and that and they will not allow them to express their feelings then they are gone so it boils out that we don't have leaders who talk for us these are some of the things now somebody driving a 23-seater bus what is the what is the sales for the day that is expected to make it depends crazy on where he's working as we in accra here accra here the passengers are there it's only traffic the blockage of the traffic jams which mm. delays their job mm. so it depends on where the bus is but normally about how much uh, between how much and how much uh, with the 23 seater you should go around uh, 130 a day yes 150 what about the taxi driver a taxi driver now they are making uh, <laughs> it must interest you drivers have got different views i for one i always challenge them in the sense that a driver driving a vehicle registered 17 will tell you you can make more than somebody driving uh let's say a z taxi you understand me mm -hmm. because that's a new one they're talking about maybe that could be getting droppings and this and that my question is you are in a hurry to go to the airport to travel outside the country and you want 17 taxi registered 70 so that you could go fast when you got to Rosa, you didn't get the 17 you are late and you got 10 or mm. z would you go or not you would have to go mm -hmm. now you look you are looking for a vehicle maybe by x to carry charcoal for you mm -hmm. and you got to the roadside you didn't get the x vehicle 17 taxi is there 
The driver will not even listen to you. Mm -hmm. So the old taxi, if it's presentable, could do that work of 17, including its work. Mm -hmm. So that old taxi should even bring in more money than mm -hmm. anyone. That is me. Mm -hmm. But with the drivers, they are saying that the 17 should make more. So to answer your question, for now, some are making 50 Ghana. A day? Yes. The minimum should be 30 Ghana. Are drivers able to make the sales? Yes. They make the sales yes, they without make difficulty? With a little bit of difficulty. Only the honesty too is eluding them. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay. Now, what are some of the problems that the drivers actually face in their work? <laughs> that work, mm. a lot of them. One of the things that I would like to iron out it's about the way passengers talk to drivers. Mm -hmm. They don't respect drivers at all. They don't respect drivers at all. Meanwhile, we are serving the public. I, I'll be happy if uh, that forum will come one day, that public should be told. Uh, so we, we nature them and then we teach them. Mm. They should have a very good way of talking to drivers. Okay, because that is our office as well. Mm -hmm. I would uh, imagine sometimes we wake up around uh, 3 a.m. to go and queue. Then maybe by 7 o'clock it is my turn to load. You come from your house. Maybe you are the first passenger. Then when you come, you begin to be saying, when will this vehicle be for? Meanwhile, the vehicle was at the stage before you came. As many were passengers, you wouldn't have come to meet it. You just came and we are complaining. The driver who walked up at dawn and just now he's staying, he's not in a hurry. The trip that we're going to make from whichever destination to the other, when we embark on that journey, at the end of it, it benefits me, the driver, than you. Hmm. No matter the billions you are going to make, the journey from one station to the other. At the, when we make it successfully, your money's come into my pocket. Mm -hmm. I get in it. So I have to complain about the gen and not you. Because the earlier I go, the earlier I come. And the more money I make. So I have to be con That is why certain times you see it over speeding. I come by 3 a.m. Maybe I'm thinking that by 5.30 I should be going. Passengers mm -hmm. may not flow. So by 7, I'm now loading. Now after loading, 7 o'clock. Some, some, some passengers will come and start talking about that. when will this car be full? I am in hurry. I am in that. I am also in hurry. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will say, oh, this car, oh, this car, okay, that kind of thing. So when we set off, the weak-minded drivers, I want to prove to them that though the car doesn't look nice, what is it? it can run. <laughs> yes. These things also contribute bit by bit to road accidents. I can tell it. Okay, so apart from the insult from passengers, what are some of your other problems? Yeah, uh, apart from insults, you know, drivers, the driver, a passenger will come and then maybe, oh, he will tell you today that his money is not sufficient. You may see eye to eye with him and take the little he has, or maybe you can even carry him to where he's going without that. The next time, when well, maybe it comes to, let's say, changing of money balancing and i don't have to give you maybe i may have to cheat on you maybe 10 persuades mm. the insults that you get the attack the comments anytime that a vehicle is on the road and passengers are misbehaving in a vehicle should you move and then luckily you meet police and report the conduct of some passengers to police they will talk to you urge you on to go and that they should a passenger report you to a policeman you are dead mm -hmm. we have no protection the moment the passenger have said and one passenger says it and another supports that's all any more problems there are a lot let's listen to them okay see yo when it comes to maintenance maintenance of the vehicle yes mm -hmm. the amount of money that goes in you realize that after working for let's say one month sometimes 
over 50 percent to 70 percent goes in for maintenance you see uh, when we are traveling to Takrade, the ramps you meet within this area mm -hmm. is even what you meet in central region. So the question is why? It's not the same Ghana. Some ramps are too huge. Mm -hmm. They cause defense to our vehicles. Who, who will speak for us? Nobody speaks for us. We're getting it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the tools are too many. Consider a driver traveling from Ho to Takradi. The number of tools that we'll be meeting on the way. That will be all. Meanwhile, potholes, whenever they are they emerge on roads, they don't attend to them quickly until there are fatal accidents. Mm -hmm. I get in it. Before and maybe when there is fatal accident and excuse me to say some important personality is involved. Quickly they try to do that corrections. But some of us they don't regard us. Whenever I'm driving and I set in portals, hey, this portal, I know this road, so I know how to drive you in the night. Mm. What about a driver who doesn't know this road? And maybe he might do that at a certain speed, and he enters this portal. Mm -hmm. What happens? Of late, in driving, I don't know whether it's the use or whatever it is, they don't observe this uh, dimmer switch. Mm -hmm. Dimming of it. Mm -hmm. They just put it on you just like that. Mm -hmm. So, some of us now we use the road markings mm -hmm. to see our way through when certain things happens. Where are the road markings now? You don't see them. I get in it. So this is that we, we have to, that the government should be looking at these things and be coming to our aid bit by bit, so that together we shall work for sanity. So what are some of the solutions you'll be looking for? You've spoken about the price of petrol. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it is possible to reduce the price of petrol? Oh, yes. World market tells us what is happening. I get in it. So, so we expect that uh, gradually it could possibly be reduced as well. Now, if prices of fuel comes down to a certain level, we will also be made to bring lorifers down. So the economy mm -hmm. will come down. Now we can all enjoy it together. So are you expecting that the price of petrol will come down? Well, I, I, I can't say I'm expecting it. But you want it to come down? Yes. It will, it, it, will, it will cut across board. As it is coming down, spare parts, like I told you, so that maybe uh, at the end of it, even if your income or your profit is small, it could do many things for you. Then your profit being big, you could do No, you can't do anything. Yes. Okay. Well, viewers, this is talk time, and we are talking to Mr. Paul Karnati, who is the treasurer, the Eastern Regional Treasurer of the Cooperative Transport Union. We're talking about all the problems that drivers face. We're talking about the increase in fuel prices. We're talking about the 15% increase in lorry fares. And as he says, passengers don't respect them at all. We're going to go for a short commercial break, and when we come back, I'd like to find out how we can improve relations between drivers and passengers. Short break. Don't call me, oh, don't call me. Malcolm Super Don't Call Me promotion. Yeah, enjoy from 5 to 30% discount on affordable supermarket products this festive season. Not just an East idea. You did job with Malcolm Malcolm Super Don't Call Me. A young for Papa. And remember, no matter what you need for this Easter, Malcolm got it all. Terms and conditions apply. Malcolm, where Ghana truly shops. Well, hello and welcome back to Talk Time. We are talking about the problems of drivers. We are talking about the 15% increase in, in transport fares and increases in petroleum prices and so on. Now, sir, you, you, you complain bitterly about how passengers do not respect drivers. How can we change that situation? How can we improve the relations between drivers and passengers? Thank you very much. Uh, it, 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 it's a, a problem that... Uh, as it is now, you and I would have to put our heads together, minds together, and then work it out. In the sense that, 
we the leaders of the various transport organization we may also have to orient our drivers because uh, it's, it's a fact some of our drivers also don't talk well or behave well to passengers as well i get in it uh, we may have to maybe like i said once more go down deep and do more education some passengers don't know that it is the right of a driver to ask him or her what do you have in your back you are in back on my vehicle please what do you have in the back you have to tell me what do you have in the back because on the way should the police stop us and they find contraband goods in your back he has the right to capture all of us maybe i am away i'm in the mm -hmm. yes so when i ask you and you tell me my back contains water if on the way they found it contains a pistol oh i asked you this one you told me then i am out they take hold of you but these days when you go asking somebody you ask what do you mean because he doesn't know it's a thing of the past this education is once more will have, some of this education will have, once more have to come how we can make it so that uh, the public will be aware of it and when we are uh, work, we work together you'll be driving i don't know if uh, it, it will be possible as a driver if you're on the way going you should be listening to the sound of your engine and even under your vehicle in case something should lose but there's a change in sound on the vehicle's movement. You'll be able to hear it. Passengers sit in your vehicle and they'll be chatting. You can't stop them, but they chat on top of their voices. Sometimes you'll be driving and then as if you've been called. No, no, the passenger is making call, shouting. So it comes to a time that if somebody is even telling you he will drop at the next stop, you may not hear. Mm -hmm. So you may pass that place. Then they start shouting on you or whoever is alighting will start shouting they must get up oh i didn't hear in the, mm -hmm. this, you see mm -hmm. we should respect each other mm -hmm. uh when you go to some companies to buy spare parts i wouldn't like to mention any you go and they tell you this is the cost of it you give the money out the cashier excuse me Will be counting you and then you and you'll be making call once you are standing there and you are in hurry to take your spare parts to go and fix you can't shout on him mm -hmm. i i think some of these things they don't they, they will not give you the attention in the driver no meanwhile without drivers a lot of things does not move so drivers we should be given that needed respect mm -hmm. and it will like i said earlier on when we orient or we educate our drivers more and we begin to exhibit that it will be a give and take affair then i think the system will be clean of certain rots now some time ago it was suggested that drivers should wear uniforms would that help uh it will it to me it will help in the sense that it will call for identification mm -hmm. you get in it mm -hmm. When drivers are wearing uniform, when you see that you know this is a commercial driver. Mm -hmm. But without that, anybody is a driver, anybody is a passenger. Mm. I get in it. Mm. And as such, since I'm in any dress, I could fool anywhere. Excuse me to say that. Mm -hmm. I get it. But if we are uniformed, it's like we are attacked. So you need to be careful. Now, how come that there are so many drivers' unions? why can't all drivers have one union so that you are united so that you have one voice how come that you have so many drivers unions uh, it's, it's it's so happened that uh, we have different principles in operating mm -hmm. you get in it mm -hmm. yes uh, you join one group there's something there which you don't like you may choose to leave and join the other group because this time you don't like it and it's creation of job as well you see mm -hmm. it so uh, as you are asking now i tell you more more of the uh, the transport or driving union more on the way coming so if you are talking about we imagine no 
it's not possible. More will come, but instead we should understand also that we are doing one business. Mm -hmm. So we should have a common voice. We should have mm -hmm. common leaders who will speak for all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's dissemination of this so that one, I don't think it will be possible that we all come together. But yeah, but but do you cooperate? We do. We the do. GPRTU, yes. the cooperative, as well. Do you, do you work together? We do. Those days we've been fighting, but of late those things have stopped. I remember somewhere in Nkoko, uh, it came to a point that GPRTU cooperative, whatever it is, they all have a common banking account. Oh, I see. Yes, they work and put the money in one account, mm -hmm. and they say equally. Do you all operate at the same lorry stations or different lorry stations? Certain places, same lorry stations. Certain places, different lorry stations. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some of the lorry stations are not in good condition. And when it rains, you know, the mud and so on. Mm -hmm. Whose responsibility is it to fix the lorry station? Uh, it's, it's the assembly. It's the assembly. Because the assembly is the owner of all lorry stations in the country. And, and we pay daily uh, what toll to them. So what are you doing to get the assemblies to do their work? You call them and they don't. That's Ghana for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. then some of us have to embark on advocacy for such things. In the area in which I live, I live in Pong, Krobo land. From Pong to Somanyan, there is no bus stop. The drivers have been crying for that. They came and tell me the police were arresting the drivers for parking indiscriminately. They said, ah, but I don't have bus stops. If you have bus stop for us, and I park at a place which is authorized, then I think it's just fable for the arrest. But there are no pastors, and you're arresting us. When you were speaking about the, the problems in the industry, you spoke about petrol, you spoke about spare parts and so on. I didn't hear anything about insurance. Are you satisfied with insurance? I'm not satisfied. If I want to talk about insurance, then I'll, I'll bring almost all of them. Insurance, for instance, the increment that they gave was too much. Meanwhile, because you and I are witnesses. There were, uh, once I was uh, partially uh, an agent to one of the insurance companies. There was this man who came and said for about 12 years, he's been paying his insurance of uh, comprehensive. There is no accident and there is no compensation. You pay the money, you take off your vehicle, and that's the end of it. When the year ends, it's gone. And they don't give you anything in returns. I get it. So the insurance is too much. In case there are accidents to those who have gone through, the hell you go through before they compensate you. It's not easy. I get it. And without the insurance, you'll be arrested. What is the increase in the insurance premium? Uh, percentage, I cannot say, but uh, we used to pay, I think, less a little bit above 200 for a taxi that's a uh, third party third party the last time i did one i think it's about 467 wow. for a minibus 467 that's a lot of money yes you see mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just too much mm. the transport business like i told you they are killing the, the, the business gradually those Yes, income tax was on a yearly basis. Mm -hmm. It came to a time they deceived, I want to use that word, mm -hmm. they deceived us. Now, when your vehicle is not working and then you have paid for the income tax, you are cheating yourself. Mm -hmm. So they want to bring it down to, on a daily basis. And most people applauded it. But when you add up, you realize that we're paying more than 200% as we're paying uh, uh, annually. It has come to stay. Mm -hmm. Now we're paying the tax on quarterly basis. We are paying so much. Mm. Now there's also a problem of uh, identity. These days you join Trotro or you join taxis and you see all kinds of symbols in the taxis. Sometimes you see an NDC flag Sometimes you see an MPP flag. Even sometimes you see an Israeli flag. Yeah. Why is that? Why, why do you feel like you have to display that when you are serving everybody in the public equally? You see, we, 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 we have differences in humanity. I get it. Uh, there are some people 
when they are into business, when you go around them and you're talking about politics, they say, no, here, yeah, no, no politics. Some do so. Mm -hmm. Some, a car owner can tell you, I don't want to see any political information on my vehicle. Mm -hmm. I know a, a driver who belongs to one party and the car owner also belongs to another party. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see the two parties symbols on the vehicle. One vehicle has yes. two parties. Symbols. Yes. The car owner has his at a place and the driver has his also at another place. I get it. And that kind of thing. And uh, I want to talk about, the, I want to talk about the political aspect. Uh, we should learn to tolerate each other. You could be, we could belong to different parties. Ghana is for all of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to political, want to just do it better. Then we should remember Ghana is for all of us. We are one people. I get it. So when we want to put that at stake, those identi identities well may not work as such. The way I would not like to join a vehicle with a symbol of a party I don't like. If that feeling is pertaining within, then I, I don't think it's good when such things are mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So now, it's a matter of difference. Matter of difference, different attitudes yes. and so on. But what about your relationship with the police? Actually, uh, that one also at a point in time I may talk about differences again, mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, when I've been saying it, when we sit among drivers and they are discussing about the police, you realize that uh, there are lots to be taught. Mm -hmm. I get in it. A devil will come and be, and we bragging or boosting that he met the police and this is the way I twisted or handled them, which in effect is not the best. The police is there to enforce laws. He's a bit uh, liberal with you. If you're able to ha have your way through, it does not mean you are clever. Another one will also like to. Mm -hmm. After the police, uh, they are considerate, to be honest with you. Things involving vehicle, commercial, one time, a police officer called me to give him a bus because I has arrested the vehicle to change that, that bus for the passengers so they can continue their journey. When I went there, what is the problem? The driver was not being respectful. We continued. It was there the police officer was teaching me certain things I didn't know. Pertaining to the side address that we mm -hmm. see on vehicles. Mm -hmm. When you go to station and you look at most vehicles, when you look at the weights they put there, the sign writers just put anything there. They are not the rightful weight of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Now, the police officer was telling me that by law, you can't just, if you, let's say you, you've got your vehicle green color, you can't take black and then write the side address. Mm -hmm. on the, you need to create a background before writing. Meanwhile, the writing should be one inch mm -hmm. by height and size. I get in it. These things, we don't know them. So the police, they are considering us, to be honest with you. So uh, they, they are fair to us. Let me be honest with you. Mm -hmm. If you want to be rude, they teach you lesson. The police people. Yes. What about some of your drivers who complain that the police extort money from them? Police extorting money. That issue, there came a time that they were talking about uh, institutions that takes more bribe than any other. Mm -hmm. They were trying to refer to police. Mm -hmm. I was trying to phone in to call. You see, what the police are doing, there are worse in this country at some places. There are worse. We have got certain uh, institutions. When you go, the amount of money they are taking for you is that. It is this. This is the figure. You don't produce it, you are not going through. But the police is. If it's one CD, it's two CD. It's normal. You are driving a vehicle, maybe your, your tires are worn out. And you are managing that week to replace it. Your windscreen has got scratched. And the police is talking about it. He is not saying it, but that is the law. I get in it. So when they are talking about extortion of money, it is not only we, the commercial drivers. After all, we are aware, uh, 
we don't pay money to bail at the police station. But when we go, we pay. What about that? Mm -hmm. What about that? If you are talking about you, what about that? So with the extortion of money by the police, uh, I don't think it's a thing we need to talk too much about. You getting me? Only certain times, there are too many on the way. You drive from Kwon to, let's say, Ashama, and you meet about four of them on the way. Four barriers. Yes. I get it. You know, there are some permanent barriers already, but other ones can just pop in. It will be too much. Those are some of the things. Have the courts been treating drivers fairly? Because there was a time when drivers used to complain that they go to court, they say, are you guilty or not guilty? If you say you are not guilty, they just lock you, remand. Crazy. The and if you say you are guilty, they fine you heavily. Uh, you see, the issue of court and driver. What the, the, you see, the court has a lot of things to do. A lot of criminal cases to handle over there. They are not even able to go through. I get in it. You are not the only driver on the road. Mm -hmm. So when you end up at the court, you are seen as recalcitrant. You are disturbing. So they need to discipline you. This is the way, the picture I, 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 I have in mind. I get in it. Yes. The, the police are on the way. Ask how many drivers do they take today? Occasionally, one, two, one, two. Mm. Until some time ago, they created that uh, court for drivers and almost all that they pick, they send them there. Mm. And I think that thing has come down. So mm. I don't have problem with that for now. Mm. Okay. Are there any other problems that drivers face that we haven't discussed? Any serious problem? For example, these days, uh, many of the buses, you have uh, screens in the bus and they're showing movies. Is that not a problem for you, the drivers? And if that is a problem, why do you show movies in movie vehicles? Well, see, like I, like I said, that this also talks about difference. You, you join my bus. Maybe I've got tape in the bus or wireless in the bus. I'm not tuning it on. Mm -hmm. Then you pick your phone. You start playing music in my, my, my vehicle. Maybe I'm, ad, I'm trying to identify some noise so that I can do some maintenance. I get in it. You don't know. You come and sit and you are playing music. If I tell you to stop now, it will sound different. Mm -hmm. So it is with this. Uh, they feel that maybe they are traveling long distance. That kind of, so they show them movies just to entertain them, that kind of thing. It's just... You see, most of the times, almost every mistake or anything they see, they want to shift it to uh, drivers. Let me talk a little bit about usage of mobile phone. We have been told not to be receiving calls or using our cell phones while driving. Mm -hmm. But the public has not been told not to be making calls while crossing the street. If I am cautious driving, mm. and then you making call, then you freak into the road, and I hit you. Mm. The end will be, I am over speeding. Meanwhile, you are making call, and forgot about yourself, and you came my way. I would have nobody to defend me. Mm. The moment a human being is knocked down by a vehicle, all the mistake goes to the driver. Mm -hmm. You see people... If you are driving, making call, crossing the road, it's not good. Some of these things, I get in it. So, putting screens in vehicles and driving. Some would say that, well, the big bus is fine, but uh, smaller ones, the way even they fix it, mm -hmm. they are not safe. Should there be accident? Mm -hmm. Those things could even hurt you or damage you. Well, viewers, this is talk time and we are speaking to Mr. Paul Karnate, who is the Eastern Regional Treasurer of the Cooperative Transport Union. We are talking about the problems of drivers. We are talking about the recent increase in lorry fares and so on. We're going to go on a short commercial break and when we come back, I'd like to discuss accidents on our roads. Accidents on our roads. Short break. How much is this? 600. Wonderful. I think I'll take this one. 
But um, what's your size? Uh, 44. That's 43. I can tell you 44. That's good. This is the man, your home of quality shoes from the UK. We have various shoes for the office, for your formal and casual occasions. Visit the man in Abilengpe. Our office is located just behind Aquatech. Our telephone numbers are 020-873-7166. You can also reach us on our landline 0302-730-760. We'll be expecting you. Hello, welcome back to Talk Time. We are talking about transportation, we are talking about lorry fares, we are talking about petroleum prices, and we are talking generally about the welfare of drivers and passengers. And we have with us in the studio uh, Mr. Paul Kanate, who is the Eastern Regional Treasurer of the Ghana Cooperative Transport Union. Now, sir. Yes, sir. They say that accidents, the number of accidents are increasing. Is that true? It's true. Why so many accidents? Hmm. Well, it's very unfortunate that it's happening like that. Why do I say unfortunate? Day in, day out, we're growing. There are developments, the improvement in things. So, uh, if accident is caused by something, we should by now be able to know and do away with it. Then instead, it's on the increase. I have a problem with the way the National Road Safety Campaign are always launched. What I'm, I'm trying to say is, when it comes to launching of the campaign, their target is just the commercial drivers. They leave the private drivers. They leave the passengers. Some will say, oh, I'm traveling. What do I have with this? We are talking about safety on our roads. So always what I say is, let's take taxi, which takes five persons. When the taxi is on the road, we have the driver, then the four passengers. Now, in terms of road safety campaign, you call the driver and then you educate him, leaving the four others. What will be the resultant cause of this campaign that you have made? National road safety campaign. We should all be involved. Traveling should be minimized. Let's all come together and listen. Let us know one thing. So when you're on the way, the mistake that I see, you also see, somebody also see. Then we talk about it. You see, but they leave all these things and when they come, they just target only, sometimes they come, they beg drivers and, and mates. That's all. They come. They deliver their message and then they go. Sometimes they start with the campaign. The message will be coming. Before I realize, a driver who started with them, his vehicle is on scale. It's full up. It's gone. Mm -hmm. I get in it. Mm -hmm. So, while we are trying to drive out, we don't achieve it. We don't, we don't, we don't attach mo much importance to it. That is to me. We don't attach much importance to, to the whole thing. There have been stories also about the issuance of fake licenses. Is that true? And could that be a contributory factor? Uh, that is true. But uh, I don't want to too much accept that as a contributing factor. In the sense that uh, I, when I started driving, I was not having license. Let me be honest. Because I was not having license, I was always careful. In the sense that, should there be a problem, they will attribute it to me because I have no license. I guess before I took license. One thing we should know is it is not the license which drives. So the license, be it fake or good, it's not the license that which drives. So talking about fake licenses attributing to accidents, no. It is because we do not observe our regulations on the road. What about the fake roadworthy certificates? People are making money into their pockets. I get in it. And that is not the work of drivers. Mm -hmm. 
Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. I have been in this transport for a long time. Because to be honest with you, it is very difficult for me to see the difference between a good certificate to a fake one in terms of roadworthy. So that one has nothing I say to do with the accident or uh, the driver per se. Hmm. I see. So overall, what can we do to improve the transport situation in the country? In terms of accident? No, accidents, cost, everything. What do you think we can do to improve? Some of your people are complaining about the operation of Okada and so on. What do you think we can do? Okada have come to stay for now. Okada have come to stay. You see a policeman stopping a motorbike. Maybe there can be three on it. He does not question the three of them on the bike. The helmet. So whether you like it or not. And certain places in Ghana, when you go, the Koda, Okada helps a lot. There are no vehicles in the, in the villages. You get in a vehicle, you go and read, Okada will take you. I get, only that uh, maybe if the government will get people sit down, they look deep into that business and come out with regulations. Okada, as we are talking about, they are doing certain things which are not good. And some drivers are also learning it. You'll be driving before you see they will take you on the right, which mm -hmm. is not good. Because assuming that maybe there's a danger that you want to avoid, so you, you are drifting to the right side, and you're also passing there, you knock it down. Mm -hmm. Overtaking is supposed to be some of these things we have to look at them and so bring sanity into the whole thing. I get in it. Uh, when I was to come to this studio, I realized that by my time I was getting late, so I was looking for Kada. Which could go through the traffic fast so i could reach it so if you are trying to condemn or condemn it, it has, it has some it. useful yes. you know it's useful we need, we need to yeah. look to it that we do it properly and do it nicely that does not bring us into the system what about the state of the roads i think i mentioned this port was some uh, a while ago mm -hmm. i get in it uh, when the the roads are going bad i know authorities they travel a lot they see them but they don't attribute much importance to it until lives are lost. I remember there was a pothole on Temako Sombo Road, which was claiming lives. Until one time he claimed 12 lives. When that thing happened, in less than 48 hours, they came to seal that thing. Should mm -hmm. it be so? So I would, I, would, I would be very much happy if the government, whichever government it is, potholes in particular, road, the, 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 the goodness of the road, they should see to it because when you get into this spot holes by, by up and down, it weakens parts of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. You don't know when your tire or your body, whatever it is, will go off. And then it can lead to an accident. Yes. Now, we have some understanding of the difficulties that drivers go through. Thank you. Very well, we've been talking to Mr. Paul Kanate, who is the treasurer of the Eastern Region branch of the Ghana Cooperative Transport Union. And we're talking about transport fares, petrol prices, the cost of spare parts, and generally about the transport industry. Please don't forget that Pan-African television is your television of choice when it comes to entertainment, when it comes to current affairs, and when it comes to documentaries. Please stay with us until we meet with you again uh, next week. It's goodbye from all of us, from the, the producer, director, from the editors, from the cameramen, from everybody. Goodbye until we meet again next week. Bye-bye.